It's got a handbrake, but it doesn't do anything. Don't tell anyone. Good morning. This is a review I've wanted to do for quite a while now of my favourite chair. It's from a 1992 minibus. You can tell because of the styling of the fabric that it's from the 90s. No, I can't do it. I'm, I've got a car here, so this is the actual review. Three litre V6 Shogun Sport, petrol. I've had it for just over a year, and in that time I've fallen in love with it. But I've also tried to sell it about four times, but every time I do, I can't bring myself to do it. I get in the driver's seat and just fall in love all over again. And there's nothing about it to love. That's what I don't understand. I don't know why I love this car. Because it's crap. It drinks petrol. Like, every time you turn the key, it's about 20 pounds. It, it's very slow. It's terrible on the road. The handling is awful. But it's just got character. There's just something about it, and I don't know what it is. Whether it's you can do stuff like that and you just don't care. It's full of scratches. There's holes. I'll get onto them. There's marks everywhere. This is before I bought it. I've just been driving it into bushes, whereas the last guy used to like hitting walls, apparently. So it's a Shogun Sport Warrior, which means it's, I think, top spec, but I don't know. It's got leather seats inside. It's quite nice. But the driving position's really weird. It's kind of like you're in a van. So your knees are all the way up here. Proper van-like. Anyone who drives a van will understand what I mean by that. And the windscreen is right there in front of your face. It's so close. It's not the biggest cabin, but it is a nice place to be. I don't know why though. It's terrible plastic. Switches that have been fitted by a previous owner for fog lights and stuff. The indicators are on the right, even though it's not imported from Japan. Not sure what that's about, but I like it. Gives it more character, doesn't it? It's got a great horn. Literally nobody ever moves out of your way. They just laugh at you. You can't complain. Oh, it sounds great. It's a three litre V6, like I said, but with a little modification and it costs 30 pounds on eBay. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you a clue. It's a Cherry Bomb back box. Remember them from the Max Power days? I put one on this thinking it would make it sound ridiculous. And it actually sounds pretty good. You can't say that doesn't sound good. And by looking at this car, you probably think it's from the 90s, but it's actually a 2005 car. But it doesn't feel like it. My Touareg is also a 2005 car. And that feels like it's about 10 years in the future from this. I don't think they updated these from the old Challenger, which was before the Shogun Sport. I don't think they updated it at all. I think they changed a few bits on the exterior and uh, just left it as a 90s car. It's very old school. I'm surprised there's not a sticker here saying be careful of your car toppling over, to be honest. They had them in the old proper showguns. Maybe someone's took it off already, I don't know. Let's right, show you a little off-roady test. So, it's in rear wheel drive, which is what you have it in for the road. Let's see if I can get up this. No, right, let's put in four wheel drive. Off roady mode. Oh, yeah. How easy was that? There's just something about this car, it's so much fun. So, on the road, you've got it in drift mode, and then off the road, you've got it in off roady mode. And it's great. You can't beat it, there's just something about this car. The Japanese got it right. Anyone who owns a Shogun Sport will know exactly what I'm on about. 
there's just something about them that is so lovable, even though they are so terrible. If anyone knows what it is, please comment and tell me. And if you're enjoying the video, subscribe to the channel. There's the hole I mentioned. That was my friend poked that through one day because he thought it would be funny. Thanks, Bear. There's another small patch of rust on the boot. Nothing too major. Got a tow bar so I can tow. Oh yeah, it's electric, obviously. So, it drives like a bag of shit, but it's great. You can probably see the wheel wobble in it. Actually, it's all right today, isn't it? Maybe I'm not going fast enough. But it's in two wheel drive now, as you will have just seen. I bought this car for 2,000 pounds and I've not spent much on maintenance at all, probably less than 500 pounds over the year. And I think it's had one service and that's included in that. It's got all old school heater knobs and stuff, which I like in a car. They're just easy to use, aren't they? Proper user friendly. Everything's kind of where you want it to be. The hazard light switch, that's easy. That does your heated with, uh, back windscreen and your mirrors, which is quite good, but the passenger side doesn't work. At least you can just pump off road though, it's great. You can do stuff like that. It's such a good car, there's just something about it. It's full of character. There's no stereo as you'll see, but who needs music when you've got a cherry bomb? Let's give it a proper road test. It's not fast, but it's not too slow. It could be slower and it could be faster. It's quite big, you get loads of space and the boot is huge and you get under floor storage in the boot which is really handy for the dog's leads and all that sort of stuff. Oh and there's a compass, I've just seen it now and it's just reminded me because I need to calibrate it. To calibrate it you have to drive round around about three times. You probably meant to do it on private land but who has space to do that on private land? It reminds me of my Subaru and Pretzer a bit in here. I know it sounds weird. But you get these little gauges here. It's got your compass and stuff on like that. Your battery voltage and your oil pressure. And it's like the turbo gauges in the Subaru. So it's a bit of home, isn't it? But it's all Japanese, I suppose. Oh, and it's automatic, this. Three litre V6 petrol, automatic. The manuals are a bit rarer than these. But these are rare in general anyway. You can see the diesels everywhere. And they've got the little bonnet scoop but these petrols don't have the bonnet scoop and they're slide, slider, slightly wider wheel arches. There's not really much to say about what's going on in here. You get an ashtray, you get a cigarette lighter socket, or well, two of them actually. You get a little cubby hole down there, you get a, quite a deep pit in there, but it's quite narrow and inaccessible. And the clip on it breaks and I've been in a few of these and the clip on all of them is broken. I'm guessing because of the movement in it. You get a little dim interior lights from the 90s. They're all right when it's dark, but they don't do very much. You get sunglasses holder, which never opens. You have to pull it down yourself and it squeaks. This one, that's another sunglasses holder. That one actually works. I never actually use that. And then this one, I think it's for credit cards and stuff. Yeah, it's like a credit card slot. Maybe for your fuel cards, because a lot of truck drivers seem to drive these cars, I've noticed. It does sound good though. The mighty V6. I love this engine, it absolutely drinks petrol. But it's just lovable. It's such a basic engine. And with the Cherry Bomb on, I think it sounds superb. It's not too loud either, but it's got a nice raspy note to it. <laughs> I do like it. So I've got my four wheel drive stick here. That's probably not the right name for it. But I'm in two high now, which is what you're meant to use on the road. So it's in two wheel drive when you're on the road. Very dangerous. I'll explain why. And then you can go into four high, which you should only use if you're on something that'll let your wheels move freely, like gravel or something. Otherwise you'll twist up the diff. And then you can go to four low when you're like going up and down hills and you need, need the low end torque and control. It's got a handbrake, but it doesn't do anything. Don't tell anyone. You get a glove box. It's not much to 
right home about, it's not really any space. You get door pockets. I wouldn't call them door bins because they're so narrow that the biggest thing you'll get in is like a wallet, like that takes up all the space. The rear seats fold down completely flat, so it's like a van. And a lot of people use them like that for dogs and like building stuff if they're a builder and they use them instead of a van, which I've noticed some people do. And when I was, I used to be a bit of a plasterer. I say a bit of one because I hated it and I don't do it anymore. And I used it for all that. That's the main reason I bought it, actually. I completely forgot about that. So I bought it for that. And then I ended up just using it to take the dog out and just to have a bit of fun in because it is a fun car to drive. That's something I wanted to mention with the rear wheel drive being permanent on the road and the mix with that and the all terrain tires mean that as soon as there's a tiny bit of water on the road, it just slides. It's really dangerous. You can't drive it around the bend at more than 20, 30 miles an hour. Otherwise your back end will slide out which is quite fun, but it is quite scary sometimes. But the other thing about it is, because it's a big car and it's got big chunky tires, if you accidentally bump it into a curb, it's not the end of the world, is it? Just crack on with your day. It's got a 70 litre petrol tank, and if you're lucky, that will get you 250 miles, which um, isn't ideal in these times. But it sounds good, and I would say it gets you there fast, but it doesn't. And I would say it gets you there comfortably, but it doesn't particularly. These seats, after about four hours for me, my back will start hurting, whereas in my Touareg, I can go for 18 hours and I'm still okay. So I can probably go longer than that. There's no ABS so, and it's icy at the moment. So tap that brake pedal and you just slide. <laughs> and especially on these tires and there's no traction control, none of that. Why would they put traction control on it? It's only the most dangerous car ever that kicks the back end out. Traction control would just be a waste of time, wouldn't it? Over the year I've had it though, I've just absolutely fallen in love with it and I can't bring myself to sell it. I've done about 8,000 miles in the year and that's because I don't really drive it much, but I realise that it's still quite a lot. But um, I just love it. I, I just absolutely love it. It's all, it's the noise and the, the, I think the danger factor and you still feel quite safe in it because it wraps you up inside and it keeps you warm and charges your phone, does what a car does, but it makes all that noise and it's rickety and I don't know, it just gives it character, doesn't it? And the way it kicks your back end out every time, you've got to be on the ball when you're driving. It's not like, it's not like the Touareg where you can just sit there and get on with it and use one finger. You've really got to concentrate on this and drive it with your heart <laughs> or you'll end up in a ditch. <laughs> you get a lovely clock right there, which is just in the perfect place. You just have a little look at it when you drive it. So easy. Mitsubishi, I've been on the ball when they built this. So it's really basic, but straightforward, fun. It'll go anywhere, do anything except 150 mile an hour and it's just lovable it's got so much character just absolutely love it i've said that a lot but i just do it's got electric windows all around which is pretty impressive for a car of its age and standards i'm surprised it doesn't have windy ones in the back and the back seats have like different levels of reclining so you can clip the back of the back seats at different stages which is quite interesting so you can lean proper back if you're in the back, which you can't seem to do in many cars. It's, it's a bit weird, feels strange. And it's got the driving position of a van, like I mentioned before, and that's in the back as well. So it's a very interesting car. Oh, track there. Hi, track there. This is its home turf, really, isn't it? They get used on a lot of farms as well, and farm tracks, and they just get beaten up, and they just live forever. They just keep going. I see there, isn't it? That's what I mean. This car, it's just it does anything. If you want to do some slides and pretend you're in a BMW, you can. If you want to go off roading, you can. If you want to use it as a van, you can. If you want to camp out in it, you can. We went camping in it and we put a double mattress in the back 
and we parked with the we reversed up to a lakeside and Windermere Lake it actually was in the Lake District and we had the boot open and we were lying in bed me and my missus this was and on the dog looking out over Windermere and the water was coming up like under the back of the car we were parked up on, on like a, a foot up on some roots so it wasn't actually touching the car either it was superb it'll just do anything it's just the best car ever if you can find one for two grand or less go and buy it the speed though goes up to 120 miles an hour but i'm not sure why to be honest it never goes that fast and i wouldn't want to go that fast i feel like everything would just fall off it if you went over 100. the rev gauge it goes up to 6,000 rpm which doesn't sound like that much but because it's not got that much power i think it's 160 ish horsepower You'll have to check. I've not done any prior research to this. I just wanted to see how much I love the thing. But it lasts a very long time, that 6,000 RPM, because it doesn't have that much power. So, it feels like you're in a Honda Civic. VTEC, baby. It is actually really capable off-road. We've been green laning a few times. And it's not been lifted or anything. It's completely standard, just on off-roady looking tyres, all terrains. And it's, it's not bad at all. Once you put it in four-wheel drive mode, it'll go pretty much anywhere and take all the abuse you can give it. And it, it seems to love it. So in conclusion, it is a great car, even though it is a pure shit box and it is terrible. But it's great. So everyone should just go and buy one because they'll last forever. And they're just the most fun you can have for such a small amount of money. And when I say the most fun, you can do anything. You go off road in, you can drive fast ish. You can drive sideways around bends pretending you're in a BMW. You can go, you can pretend it's a van. Here you go, four things already. Um, you can go camping in it and sleep in the back because it's got all the space. Uh, that's five things. Okay, I can't think of any more, but that's enough, isn't it? Go and buy a Shogun. Best thing you'll ever do. I think we'll end it there anyway, so thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Comment, let me know what you think. Do you want to get a Shogun or have you got one? And uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.